everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Ricky Sanders of DailyRoto.com, who's here to break down tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Ricky? Nothing. I'm already considering these rocket puns for tonight because we're not expected to have James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And on DailyRoto.com, we've already used Skyrockets in flight. We've already used Rocket Man. So we're kind of all out of the music puns. I'm really lost here with what I'm going to do with these puns tonight. It's still rock and roll to me, baby. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. This is what I'm here for. You just got to ask, right? So it's all about the Rockets tonight. We'll get to them in a moment. Let's start out with some of the stars that were able to get in there because of the Rockets. And we begin at point guard. We begin with Luka Doncic. We have a six-game slate tonight. So Luka Doncic isn't in the greatest of matchups, but he does have a really easy-to-fit 10900 price tag. Like, we would probably be paying 12000 for him tonight with all these Rockets. Let's just be honest with ourselves. And now you've got him in the game with the highest total of the night, 226 and a half. So not an incredibly projected high-scoring night just in general. The Mavericks are listed as one-point road favorites, so we expect the game to remain competitive. And his rates have remained strong, even without Kristaps Porzingis. Over a 37.5% usage rate, over a 48% assist rate, over a 14.5% rebound rate. So he's just a guy in competitive games who's a, who's a threat for a triple-double at any point. I mean, again, this matchup on paper does not jump off the page, but any risk associated with it is basically baked into this price tag. So I think he's the easy spend. I think he'll be very popular, but I think rightfully so. Luke is always super popular and rightfully so. Even though the matchup isn't what we ideally want, going with Luca is never the wrong call. Dodgic, a fine start tonight. With just a six game slate, you're able to get Luca in there. And Donovan Mitchell, who's been playing really well as of late. And although the price has increased, it's still too low. Exactly. I mean, we were shouting from the mountaintops last week, 6,500 for Donovan Mitchell. This is crazy because, look, he's up to 7,600 and we're still playing him, which shows just how good of a value he was last week. Basically, with Mike Conley back, his rates haven't moved too drastically. I mean, we're still talking about a guy who we have at over a 31% usage rate baseline on Daily Roto. And look, this team's being implied to score six points above their season average. So Vegas expects some serious scoring from this team. And if they're going to score, we expect Donovan Mitchell to be involved in that. Even if the game blows out and we have a 12-point spread tonight, it's very likely that Donovan Mitchell is involved in the blowout. So three-quarters of this Jazz team smashing often means we get over 100 points in three quarters. So almost a game's worth of scoring. So I think almost in any scenario, Donovan Mitchell should be part of a fun game environment. And if this game stays close, he's just a legitimate run back from all the Houston guys we're going to be playing anyways. So Donovan Mitchell, just a clear target at the shooting guard position. Absolutely no brainer to get Donovan Mitchell in your lineups. So you want to stack that Houston Utah game. And even if it does become a blowout, Donovan Mitchell is going to be the reason it does. Mitchell, the no brainer option for the Jazz. Sticking in this game, we get to Clint Capella with no Russell Westbrook expected to play, no James Harden expected to play. A whole lot of Clint Capella makes sense on this slate. Yeah, we do not have a giant sample. In fact, we don't even really have a small sample without Russell Westbrook and James Harden playing alongside Clint Capella this year. We have 20 minutes of sample, but in this 20-minute sample, we've got Capella over an 18% assist rate and over a 33% rebound rate. And look, that just makes sense that we would see Capella's rebound rate skyrocket because Russell Westbrook is such a good rebounding guard that when you take him off the floor and you basically put four little guys alongside a big man in Clint Capella, it's obvious he's going to grab most of the rebounds. Now, obviously, the individual matchup against Rudy Gobert isn't great, and obviously, Obviously, we can't take those percentages in a 20-minute sample to be fact. So we've taken a more conservative route on Daily Roto, and we're projecting him for just about a 14% uh, assist rate and just about a 26% rebound rate. And he's still basically projecting for the same number of fantasy points as Rudy Gobert, who's 2,000 more expensive. So I think... Clint Capella is going to fall into double-digit rebounds by accident. It probably should be more than that. And you still have Eric Gordon and Austin Rivers active who can throw him lobs, maybe not as effectively as Harden and Westbrook, but they should be able to get him involved. I think this is just too cheap of a price point given the context, and I think this is just a guy we need to be playing tonight. Clint Capella has to be in your lineup no matter what that price is, and it's not too high. Even if it's a limited sample size, we know the damage that he can do. Capella, another no-brainer option from this game. 
And let's stay in this game for a couple more players, Ricky. And that brings us to Austin Rivers, who's going to get the opportunity to start with no Russell Westbrook and no James Harden. He's part of that backcourt that's going to take a lot of shots. I have no idea if they'll go in, but... <laughs> minutes will be there. Exactly. And minutes will be there for a player priced 100 above the bare minimum for Austin Rivers, which is just a crazy price tag here. You look at without Westbrook and Harden on the floor, we have a, a lot more of a sample for him, at least comparatively to Clint Capella. 140 minutes. He's averaging over one FanDuel fantasy point per minute in that sample. And Houston plays a tight rotation. They like to play eight or nine man rotations, kind of regardless of who's healthy, unless there's a blowout at the end, then you get like those sporadic, you know, bench guy minutes. But we think that this is still going to be a condensed rotation. And Austin Rivers is just going to be the point guard for most of the time. And we're projecting him at about 0.85 FanDuel fantasy points per minute. And with 34 minutes of court time, that is still enough for him to project as a top two per dollar value on the entire slate, along with Clint Capella, showing just how good of a value he is that he's so good per dollar and he's more expensive. But anyways, back to Austin Rivers. I mean, at 100 above the bare minimum, even if this game gets out of hand, we expect him to remain on the court. So I just don't see a scenario in which you fade him tonight, other than maybe for projecting, you know, foul trouble. And in that case, you might get Chris Clemens. But I think Austin Rivers is clearly the way higher percentage play of the two. Yeah, absolutely. He, the higher percentage chance of succeeding is Austin Rivers. Even if you are nervous about foul trouble or some other factors, the floor is just much higher, in my opinion, on Austin Rivers as well. Give me Rivers at the point guard spot here in Houston for, uh, you know, nothing. <laughs> let's, one, let's get one more guy with the Houston Rockets, and that's Eric Gordon. He's come on as of late. He's coming back from injury. You know, the shot really hasn't been falling all that much. But Gordon, another one of these Rockets that if both these superstars don't play, you have to play him tonight. Exactly. He's the number one option on offense when you get one of these guys out with the second unit, right? Because this team likes to split up. Basically, option 1A on offense and option 1B and scatter them. And now you don't have Russell Westbrook and you don't have James Harden. So Eric Gordon is basically the main playmaker. He is option one on offense. And you look at it, I mean, the sample just proves it. It's only a 61-minute sample, but without either James Harden or Russell Westbrook on the floor this year, a 39.8% usage rate for Eric Gordon. Now, look, he shot poorly all year long not having Russell Westbrook or James Harden on the floor to set him up for open threes, that probably won't help his field goal percentage, but we're projecting him for over a 30% usage rate and 35 minutes. Remember, Russell Westbrook and Harden are guys who will play 37 plus minutes a night. So I think if we're assuming the you know rotation stays anywhere near as condensed, 35 plus minutes should be a no brainer for Eric Gordon. And even if he shoot, shoots poorly to begin, there should be enough shots and enough playmaking that he should get you there at 4,400. Honestly, in this scenario, I think we would still be paying for him at probably 6,500 or 7K just because of how much of the offense has to run through him. So we're certainly paying for him at 4,400. 4,400, it's a freaking no-brainer, man, with, with Eric Gordon. You just don't need him to do all that much to reach five times his value, and I think he can get there tonight as long as the opportunities exist, and they will. Eric Gordon should be in your lineups tonight. One final player to get to, and it's at center, and I know we've gone back to him a lot lately, and it wasn't a great weekend for him, but you're still buying in here on Dwayne Dedman. I know the minutes are there. Production hasn't really been. How come you got? How come you're saying and, and you guys over DailyRoto.com are thrown out there starting Dwayne Dedman? Okay, so Dedman has been frustrating, but let's think of the context these last few games. Dwayne Dedman matched up against Andre Drummond, played 31 minutes in that game. Now we've got Dwayne Dedman around the bare minimum, and he's coming off a game where he disappointed. He played 19 minutes against the small Bulls team, but. I mean, they basically have Thaddeus Young as their center right now. So a power forward and really an undersized power forward playing center for them. Tonight, this team is facing Carl Anthony Towns. Now, which center is Carl Anthony Towns more likely to, you know, lo look like in terms of scheme? Andre Drummond or Thaddeus Young? And clearly the answer is Andre Drummond. You want your top center in against him. Dwayne Denman's a good defender. And so we're projecting him for 26 minutes, which is splitting the difference. And look, Harry Giles played 22 minutes last game, and some consider him to be a true center. So it's certainly possible that he could eat into Deadman's minutes if he's playing well. 
but there's just enough minutes available here if you think that Deadman can get to the mid-20s and potentially the 30s, which he's, by the way, done twice in his last, I think it's five games, gone over 30 minutes. He's just a volatile guy who I think you play based on matchups, and I think this is one of those matchups where we have to think that Dwayne Deadman sees more minutes than he did last game. If you at all believe in that, I think he's a fine pivot off Clint Capella. I think the field is going to be as worried as you probably are, which will keep his ownership down, and yet this is a starter who, again, has 30-minute upside for almost the bare minimum. The upside is there. The matchup is so much better than it has been, as Ricky described. Dwayne Dedman, you have to like the minutes, and hopefully the production will come tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Ricky. I appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Of course, and thanks for having me as always. Absolutely. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at the Super Bowl. Some picks and props, well, we can't stop thinking about. Enjoy that show. Enjoy the games tonight. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow on the FanDuel Hurry Up.